I am Professor T. H. Vidyani Devi. Today I am going to deal about the management of normal labor. Normal labor word itself is not a normal, it is associated with a lot of risk which may arise to both the unborn fetus and the mother. So by taking care of active management and uh, assessing well the well both the mother and the baby, we can uh, prevent both the fetus and the mother from getting into complication. Now we will see what uh, is normal labor. So it is a series of events that takes place in the genital organs in an effort to expel out the viable product of conceptors out of the womb and through the outer world. This is what we know that uh, labor is. And next is delivery. It is little different from labor. Delivery and labor, which of itself, it is expulsion of the fetus. But if we talk about the labor, it is involving series of events and you have to fulfill certain criteria to call it as a labor. But in delivery, it is not the not just the normal or abnormal. It is just the expulsion of the product of conceptus after the fetal viability. Fetal, it may be through the cesarean section or it may be through normal, whatever the root or the medium is. It is the mat it matters just the expulsion of the fetus out of the womb. So this is about the labor and the delivery. Now uh, we will see what a, a labor can be normal. Some condition we have to fulfill to call it as normal labor. First is it should be a spontaneous in onset and it should be at term and with a vertex presentation it should be and without undue prolongation there should be an unnecessary prolongation by by plotting or uh, monitoring the partograph well. Natural termination with minimal age should be there. There should be minimum aids we should use in the labor. And it should be without having any complications affecting the health of the mother and the fetus. So we have to fulfill this five criteria to call the labor as a normal labor. Next we will see the stages of labor. So if we talk about the stages of labor, we have four stages of labor. That is first stage, second stage, third stage and fourth stage. First stage is also called as the cervical stage. It, uh, it takes 12 hours in primary gravida mothers and 6 hours in multi gravida mothers. The first is in the image we can see that it starts with the onset of labor pain and it ends at the cervical cervix reach to the full dilatation that is 10 cm of dilatation. And in the second stage it should not start from the ruptured of membrane. It, it, has, uh, it has two phases, again propulsive phase and uh, expulsive phase. The second stage starts from the cervix rich full dilatation that is 10 cm and it ends at the expulsion of the fetus. So here in propulsive phase, it will start from the full dilatation up to the descent of the presenting part to the pelvic floor. Now, uh, expulsive phase will be distinguished by maternal bearing down efforts and it will end with delivery of the fetus. So, uh, the time duration, the second, the second stage of labor tax is 2 hours in primary gravida mothers and in 30 minutes in multi para mothers. Now, coming to the third stage of labor, it is also known as the placental stage. Delivery, it will start from the delivery of the child and it will end at the expulsion of the placenta. So here, the time duration, the third stage of labor tax is 15 minutes in both the multi and primary gravida mothers. If we do active management during this stage, it can be reduced up to 5 minutes. So last stage is fourth stage of labor. Fourth stage of labor when we focus on the observation for at least one hour after the delivery. So this is about the stages of labor. 
So now next, uh, before uh, conducting labor, well, assessing of the labor pain and looking for vagina is very indispensable. So first here comes the history, history taking history of a wo woman who was uh, going to give birth is very important. History of amenorrhea should be noted down with special reference to the last menstrual period and expected death of delivery that is EDD. Any specific complaints other than pain it should be noted down if so if there is any other complaints rather than pain then we have to take details about the nature of that complaint duration of the complaint and the progression of that complaint whether it is gives on increasing or intermittent or it is on and off whatever the the details of the complaint whatever the woman registered continuing the history we will see about the frequency duration and intensity of uterine contraction and the time when they become uncomfortable any history of leakage or bleeding per vaginum should be noted down it is important while uh, while giving birth now the vaginal signs which we should be we should notice during labor so first uh, when contraction comes the perineum, the perineum will become distended it will tense and the skin will look like a glistening and overlying skin become tense and it make it will cause the bulb will opening becomes circular it will thin out then the sphincter will be stretched out stool may becomes out during contraction has receipts after the contraction passes so we know that contraction uterine contraction comes and contraction relaxation contraction relaxation it is the way what, uh, what uterus contraction occurs but during labor after contraction relaxation comes but after contraction passes off the head will recedes it will not go back to the upper portions then there is no recession even after the contraction passes off that is also called as crowning recession in the sense when the contraction passes off normally the the head of the fetus it will it will push back to the previous uh, previous place where it is but here recession means even when the contraction passes off the uh, head of the fetus still remain in the same place Next is the head is worn by extension. Extension is one of the steps which we are going to discuss later on. Expulsion of the soldier and the trunk immediately thereafter a gush of liquor and hind water will come. So this is the vaginal sign we should note it down. Now the maternal signs. Features of exhaustion, we can see respiration is slowed down with increased perspiration in the sense uh, excessive sweating during labor is called perspiration. During the bearing down effort, the face becomes congested. It will become reddish and full of uh, sweats. But mother's neck veins will become prominent. Next, coming to the fetal effects. Slowing of fetal heart rate will occur because it is because during labor uh, already labor is started. So the during contraction fetal heart rate will reduce slightly. It should it will be during contraction and when uterus becomes relaxed, the fetal heart rate becomes to normal. Next we will see about the principle common throughout the labor. The first principle is descent takes place throughout the labor whichever part leads and comes and meets the resistance of the pelvic floor it will automatically rotate forward until it comes under the symphysis pubis which is a part of the female pelvis. whatever emerges from the pelvis it will automatically turn around it will pivot around the pubic board so that it, the portion of the fetus may slip through through the space which is available in the pelvis so this is the uh, principles uh, which 
is common throughout the labor process. Now, if we see uh, the, a condition which is uh, we, here we are talking about the normal labor process. If we are taking a position or a condition, so we have to understand this terminologies uh, like lie, presentation and all. So first terminology is lie. Lie here, it is the relationship of the long axis of the fetus to the long axis of the centralized uterus or maternal spine. It doesn't matter whether the uterus is introverted or retroverted. It is only the relationship of the long axis of the uterus to the long axis of the centralized uterus or the maternal spine. Here the possible lie are longitudinal, transverse and oblique. Next terminology is presentation. So the, it is the part of the fetus which occupies the lower pole of the uterus. Here the possible presentations are cephalic, podalic, soldier and compound. Next is attitude. Attitude in the sense the relationship between the different parts of the fetus to one another like the scene of the fetus and the chest of the fetus. If the, if the fetus is well flexed, it means the uh, fetus scene touching the chest of the fetus, it is possible when the fetus flex well. So the attitude means the relationship of the different parts of the fetus to one another. Next is presenting part. The part of the presentation which overlies the internal os. In the uterus we have fundus, body and the os. Here the presenting part we will call where the portion of the presentation which overlies the internal os of the uterus. So in cephalic presentation we, we consider about the cephalic presentation the possible presenting part are vertex, brow or face. It depends on the flexion of the head again. If the fetus is not is not well flexed, then the presentation or presenting part will be changed. If the fetus is well flexed, the attitude is well, then the presenting part will be also it may be vertex or it may be brow or face according to the flexion condition. Next is denominator. It is actually an arbitrary bony fixed point on the presenting part which may come in relation with the various quadrants on the maternal pelvis. It is, uh, it is actually the bony fixed point on the presenting part. We will, we will uh, be use this word, word uh, during the mechanism of labor. So next word is the position. The it is position frequently we will use during the mechanism of labor. So position is the relation of the denominator to the different maternal quadrants of the pelvis. So these are few terminologies which we use during a mechanism of labor or process during labor. So next, uh, if we take a condition like uh, which is one of the most common presentation is vertex. And uh, in vertex presentation, the common positions is LOA and the ROA. LOA, left occipital anterior and ROA, right occipital anterior. In such a condition, LOA or ROA, the lie, the terminology which we have discussed is the lie will be longitudinal and presentation will be cephalic and position is LOA either LOA or ROA, attitude will be good flexion. Denominator is occiput. Presenting part will be the posterior part of the anterior parietal bone. So this is the condition if we take. And with this same presentation or, or the condition, we will uh, we'll now continue with the mechanism of labor. So we know that Mechanism of labor, it is uh, the series of movements that occur on head of the fetus and the 
shrunk in the process. So mechanism of normal labor. So uh, normal labor definition we have discussed. It is a series of events that occur in the genital tract. But here it is a series of movements that occur on the head and the fetal trunk. It is in a process of adaptation during its journey through the pelvis to, to just come out from the genital tract out of the womb through the vagina into the outer world. This is the mechanism of labor. So uh, after this, after mechanism of labor definition be understood, now preparation for delivery. While uh, when the woman comes for delivery, we have to prepare the lady like we are preparing the pre-operative or post-operative. So here for preparation for delivery, first of all, it is toileting the genital, in, uh, genital uh, genitalia and the inner side of the thighs. It should be done with cotton swabs, which is it should be shocked in a sablon or detol solution and the genital pubic here it should not be shaved it just it should it should be cut it down very short it is because of the micro abrasions or infections it may cause uh, because of this shaving so now nowadays it is recommended that it should not be shaved it should be cut it short one sterile shade should be placed beneath the buttocks of the patient and one over the abdomen. Sterile leggings are to be used to cover the other unnecessary uh, parts to um, provide privacy to the mother. Then essential aseptic procedures it should be done. Uh, we should remember this is essential aseptic procedures with the three C's which is clean hands clean surface and clean cutting and ligaturing of the core and to catheterize the bladder if it is full uh, bladder it should not be lab bladder full it may hinder the labor process as it is taking space if the bladder is full so here if we talk about the uh, possible condition that LOA or ROA mechanism of labor, the possible mechanism of labor occiput will be anterior here and the right and the left side of the maternal pelvis and the, this blue dot is indicating the occipital bone of the fetus and the pubic is the maternal pelvic area, symphysis pubics. So here we can see the left on the left side of the maternal pelvis occipital bone uh, occupies the area so here if we consider that occiput is at the anterior portion that is loa or the roa the possible posi positions are left occiput anterior next is right occiput anterior and occiput at the anterior the red color of area is signifying the occiput bone of the fetus. So in the first image, you can see that the red colored uh, occipital area is at the left side of the maternal pelvic bone. And in the second image, you can see the red colored occipital bone is at the right side of the maternal pelvis. And the, in the third image, you can see the red colored occipital bone of the fetus occupies just behind the symphysis pubis of the maternal bone. So these are the three possible uh, positions if we talk about the occiput interior positions. So now the principal movements that is basically the mechanism of labor, we have a uh, uh, few movements in that among that one of the step which is called descent it takes throughout the level which it's colored in green this indicating i have indicated in green color it will occur throughout the labor the first is engagement of the head next is flexion 
so uh, engagement if we talk about in detail of the engagement uh, uh, like LOA condition in, and in vertex condition engagement of the head is actually when the fetus head enters the pelvic brim the occiput will lie in relation to the left iliopubic eminence iliopubic eminence is a part of the landmark of the pelvis or the inlet or the brim of the pelvis so since it, the, in this condition the sensiput at the right sacroiliac joint and the sagittal suture sagittal suture of the fetal skull will lie on the right oblique diameter of the maternal pelvis the here the engaging entero posterior diameter of the head is uh, will be either of sub occipital pragmatic which may be 9.5 cm or the sub occipital frontal which is 10 cm after this fetus will flex in flexion it will uh, flexion increases throughout the labor it will result in a small presenting diameter so that it will uh, uh, slip down diameter which will negotiate the pelvis more easily if the pelvis is adequate resistance of the maternal so passes it will promote the full flexion of the head so this is the flexion this is flexion actually this uh, mechanism of labor all the movements which occurs here is like fetus is moving all the movements which makes the fetus itself accommodate in the space which is available in the maternal fetal uh, maternal pelvis next movement is descent descent uh, actually it is occurring throughout the labor so after engagement of the head, uh, descent will occur and after that flexion will occur. This descent is actually a continuous process which ends with the expulsion of the fetus. Until unless the fetus is not expelled, expelled out, descent will uh, take place continuously. The fact, some factors like uterine contraction, uh, retraction and maternal bearing down efforts, uh, it will facilitate the descent of the fetus. With some with prior engagement of the head in the primary gravida, uh, there is no descent in the first stage. Uh, while in multipara descent will start with the engagement of the head. This uh, head reaches the pelvic floor when the cervix is uh, ten centimeter that is fully dilated. So next step is internal rotation. As the internal rotation starts after the flexion, as the descent keeps on taking place, the leading part, whichever the part is leading, it will push downward onto the pelvic floor. And when the contraction fades away, when the relaxation comes, the pelvic floor it will rebound back. It will rebound back. Uh, it may it this rebounding back is causing the occiput to glide forward, and the occiput will rotate to 1 by 8 of the circle that is 45 degree to lie under the pubic arc so that it the space will be available to and to sweep out the portion of the fetus next is crowning and in crowning the internal rotation uh, the rotation after the internal rotation crowning will be followed here Here it will uh, take place, descent will take place until the occiput passes beyond the symphysis pubis in a flexed attitude of the fetal head. This may cause a slight twist in the neck of the fetus, which will be uh, retwisted later on. Uh, as the head, uh, there is no longer in direct alignment with the soldier, and, uh, and the anterior posterior diameter of the head now will lie in the widest entero posterior diameter of the pelvic outlet. The maximum diameter that is the bipartite diameter of the head will stretch the bulbal outlet without any recession of the head even after the contraction is over. 
the the condition is called is the the step is called the crowning of the head main is the matter the thing is there should be no recession of the head even after the contraction is over so this is called crowning next step if we talk about this extension after crowning the fetal head uh, can extend pivoting it will turn around on the suboccipital region around the pubic bone this releases the sensiput face and the steam which sweep the perineum and a bone by a movement of extension with this ex extension the face of the head will be at uh, the face of the fetus will be delivered next is restitution so after the birth of the head there is a visible passive movement in the head to undo the twist which is a uh, cause in the neck of the fetus during the internal rotation during this untwisting movement the occiput will move 1 by 8 of the circle towards the side from it is started previously next step is external rotation of head or internal rotation of soldier so this is internal rotation of the soldiers in the same way as that of the head and the soldiers will now lie in the widest diameter of the pelvic outlet namely anterior posterior the anterior soldier reaches uh, first to the levator and nine muscle which looks like an interlocking interlocking uh, like if we like uh, it will make it stop so that the head of the fetus will sweep nicely and the the anterior soldier will reach first to the levator and eye muscles and it will rotate anteriorly to lie under the surface pubis this movement is clearly seen as at the same time the head also turns one by eight of the circle externally in the same direction as it occurs during restitution process so this is external rotation or the internal rotation of the soldier next is birth of the soldier and trunk birth of the soldier and trunk will occur by the uh, lateral flexion with this step soldier and the trunk of the fetus will be delivered with the this it will it is possible only when the descent takes place continuously the anterior soldier will uh, steps below the symphysis pubis and by the movement of the lateral flexion of by the spine the posterior soldier sweeps over the perineum and the rest of the trunk is expelled out by lateral flexion so this is about the principal movements or the steps of mechanism of labor so next in this image uh, showing the mechanism of labor you can see the how this mechanism of labor steps looks like first uh, the this after the engagement of the head this will takes place here the blue dot is signifying that that the biparietal diameter of the fetal skull lies at the oblique diameter of the maternal pelvis in this is, uh, image you can see that the occiput of the fetal skull occupies at the left iliopubic eminence and it uh, the sensiput portion is at the right sacroiliac uh, articulation or the joint and the sagittal suture of this fetal skull lies on the right uh, oblique diameter of the maternal pelvis so after this after the after uh, occurring flexion it changed little bit and after that in the internal rotation the image uh, keeps changing as you can see the blue dots the position of the blue dots become changed and the occiput is rotating uh, so that it comes in front of the symphysis pubis this is only possible when uh, the occiput will rotate to 1 by 8 of the circle that is 45 degree to lie just to lie under the pubic arc this is about instrumentation and after this crowning will occur and in crowning uh, the 
the internal rotation will be uh, followed this end will take place until the oxygen put passes beyond the symphysis bubules and it should be in a well flexed attitude of the fetal head next is extension with this steps we also have discussed before with this extension uh, the head and the face will be delivered pivoting on the suboccipital region around the pubic bone this releases the sensory foot face and the chain which will sweeps the perineum and will be borne by a movement of extension well in the here also in this image the two blue dots the position of the two blue dots is become changed after that uh, extension next is uh, restitution and in restitution after it is after it is occurred after the delivery of the head and the face in this image the head and the face is outside the perineal uh, outside the maternal pelvis but uh, the position again it becomes changed as at the, the next moment is is try is the, the fetus will try to sweep out the soldier of the fetus the internal anterior and the posterior shoulder of the fetus and in this restitution it is we can see the this passive movements which occurs in head um, this is due to the undue twist caused by the uh, internal rotation during the internal rotation twisting of the neck occurs that twisting will be retwisted during this uh, steps that is restitution it should be by um, by one to eight circle movements of the occiput from the side from where it is started uh, next uh, next is internal rotation next is internal rotation of the shoulder same time external rotation of the head we can see here head becomes outside the maternal pelvis uh, meanwhile the internal rotation of the soldier will occur here the the vibrator diameter will be at the anterior posterior diameter of the fetus and the sagittal suture will lie at the transverse of the maternal pelvis at the same time the soldier of the fetus will lie under the symphysis pubis uh, it is it makes possible because of the levator and eye muscles of the maternal ma maternal pelvic muscles and it will rotate anteriorly to lie under the symphysis pubis and this movement we can clearly seen uh, seen uh, from the from the outside and at the same time the head also uh, turned one by eight of the circle externally uh, in the same direction as restitution. Uh, that's why we can see the external movement of the head and uh, at the same time internal rotation of the soldier are cast inside. We can see the lateral flexion of the trunk of the fetus anterior, uh, delivering the anterior soldier and the posterior soldier of the fetus. It is possible when this takes place continuously. The anterior soldier will scap below the symphysis pubis and by this moment the lateral flexion by the spine and the posterior shoulder will sweep over the perineum and uh, and the consequently rest of the trunk will be expelled out by the lateral flexion so and the baby is delivered so here these are the uh, moments uh, which which involves during the mechanism of labor and next week you can see few cardinal moments of labor in loa condition Head is delivered by extension, external rotation. Oh, sorry. Uh, second is restitution and twisting of the neck, which is occurred during internal rotation and uh, external rotation of the head. Meanwhile, the internal rotation of the shoulder. You can see the image. How the skin becomes tense and it uh, it looks uh, the circular shape and. Uh, uh, it stretch out, bulbal out, bulbal outlet is stretched out by the fetal head. And how we should apply the culture is applying the head and the you know, head on the perineum along with the head of the fetus. One hand supporting the perineum to prevent the perineal tear. 
or on on the other side the lab hand supporting the fetal skull fetal head see the the diameter the anterior posterior or the sagittal diameter where it lies at the, during the time of extension and in restitution you can see the untwisting of the neck in the image this is the the view of external rotation how the head uh, position changed during external rotation of the head and internal rotation of shoulder to max fits the anterior shoulder of the fetal fetus so now next is aims during labor process we have uh, we have discussed about this uh, movements which uh, fetus fetus tries to uh, move in the head of the head or body uh, to make accommodate to the space available in the maternal pelvis now comes the process of uh, uh, now comes the labor here during labor we should keep in mind some of the points like uh, delivery we our aim is to deliver a normal healthy baby and second is to anticipate recognize and treat potential abnormal conditions before the significant hazards develop for both the mother and the fetus. These are the aims during labor. Now we have already discussed that um, stay, we have four stages of labor. First stage, second, third stage and fourth stage. Now the management of first stage of labor. In this we will discuss about the management, preparation and care and the partogram. So in management, uh, in assessment, it will include history taking. So in history taking, women's antenatal record should be reviewed well. Every uh, detail should be noted down. And if no records is available during antenatal care, antenatal care records is not accessible, then we have to take complete history of the mother. Next is uh, examination. Uh, in examination, we have to see the pallor uh, edema or the abdominal scar which, which arises uh, because of previous uh, lower segment surgery section or any other scar marks or because of any surgery or incision. Then uh, vital signs, blood pressure, pulse, respiration rate and temperature, it should be noted down. Then heart and lungs general condition, it should be assessed well. Next, in abdominal examination, abdominal examination in abdominal assessment, we have, uh, we have to find out all the possible conditions uh, like which lie at this, which position is possible position at this and the fetal heart rate and all and here abdominal examination uh, we can do with the uh, with the four uh, that possible steps that is lateral uh, frontal grip lateral grip pelvic grip and the pelvic grip with this we will understand some of the details regarding the condition of the fetus inside the womb in this examination we will with this uh, with the steps we will note down the presentation and position along with the engagement of the head then we will auscultate the auscultate the fetal heart and evaluate the uterine contraction the details of the the nature of the uterine contraction which occurs like the intensity of the contraction duration of the contraction and frequency of the contraction how how frequently it is coming within a limited period within a minute or within a 10 minutes and in this image you can see this is abdominal examination pelvic cavity assessment this line is representing the pelvic brim and the scoring 5 by 5 4 by 5 3 by 5 2 by 5 1 by 5 and 0 by 5 is indicating the level where this fetal head is uh, closer or at what distance it is occupying this pelvic this line will indicating is indicating the pelvic brim and in the first five by five the fetus head 
is just touching the pelvic rib so this is just above the pelvic rib that's why it is marked as 5 by 5 and and in the second the pelvic uh, brim is touched by the fetal head and it is it's undergoing little bit that's why it is 4 by 5 so so on if the viparietal diameter is totally immersed in the totally engaged in the pelvic brim it is totally immersed in the pelvic brim it is 0 by 5 like that we will access the abdominal assessment you can see in the images so it is a uh, fetal head is completely above the it is seen that the pelvic brim just touched by fetal skull it is completely the fetal head is completely above the pelvic brim that's why it is 5 by 5 and in the second the sensiput is high or foot is easily felt that's why it is 4 by 5 and in the third since you put easily felt and occiput is also felt and the and the fourth since you put also felt and occiput just felt that's why it is two by five and in one by five since you put felt occiput is not felt if occiput is merged inside the pelvic brim of the maternal pelvis and in zero by five none of the portion is either uh, neither since you put nor the occiput is palpable it is totally inside the pelvic brim that's why it is marked 0 by 5 you can see in this image also it is representing the same pelvic cavity and the condition of the fetal skull where it is uh, reaching whether it is touching the pelvic brim or it is totally merged in the pelvic brim so that we cannot uh, find neither the we can find neither the sensiput nor the occiput. Next is vaginal sign. Here in vaginal examination, we have to uh, note we have to find out the per vaginal examination findings. That is the presentation, whatever the presentation of the of the fetus is, engagement, the condition, how uh, the fit, how much the fetal head descends, and the station of the head. And the position whether uh, either it is LOA, ROA, or ROP, LOP, whatever the condition is. And in the station here, you can see in the pelvics, uh, it is marked minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, and plus 1, plus 2, and plus 3. Here, an arrow has been uh, marked joining the actual spine of the maternal pelvis. This line is indicating the zero station at as it is marked zero the imaginary line between the two HL spine is marked as each uh, is marked as zero station if it goes above one above the zero then it will be marked as minus one subsequently it is marked where the fetus head uh, reaches the area if the fetus head reaches the minus one then while PP examination we will mark as uh, fetal's head is at minus one positions, minus one station. If the fetal head reaches the uh, zero level of uh, maternal spa, maternal pelvis, then we will note it as the fetal head at zero station. Here the possible positions are here the possible positions are shown like uh, LOA and in LOA you can see the left occiput of the fetus is at the left side of the maternal pelvis. The first image of uh, fetal skull and pelvis is the view uh, how it will look like as a echo chair like uh, it is viewing from outside only only the only we can see like this the pelvis and the fetal skull if we look as a whole then we will look uh, we can see at the second image along with the fetus like uh, how the fetus is descending and the same condition if we view from the in the from front we can uh, we can you we can see like this the the occiput at the left and the uh, sensiput at the right uh, sacroiliac articulation of the maternal pelvis and coming to the next lop left occipital posterior left occipital posterior here the left uh, occiput will be at the site of the 
uh, at the at the site of the at the, the left side and uh, it will be uh, occiput bone of the fetal skull will lie on the posterior portion of the maternal pelvis and in the third you can see the right occipital transverse and in image you can see that occipital will be at the right side and it will lie at the uh, at the transverse diameter of the maternal pelvis and in the next lot this is left occipital transverse same here it is it is the occiput is at the left side of the transverse diameter of the maternal pelvis and in the next roa roa means the right occipital interior and then the occiput of the fetal skull lies on the right side of the maternal pelvis and it is in the at the anterior portion of the maternal pelvis and in the last possible position is that is rop right occipital posterior the occiput position occiput of the fetal head lies at the right side and the posterior portion of the maternal pelvis so these are the possible some of the possible positions The portion which is marked as S is indicating the symphysis pubis or the maternal pelvis and the P is indicating the sacral promontory of the maternal pelvis. So how this is the this is the image showing the resemblance examination to determine the diagonal conjugate which is the distance between the lower margin of the pubic arc to the sacral promontory which is approximately 2 cm longer than the occipital conjugate. In the next phase, uh, you can see the how much the atrial spine is prominent by touching our finger you can uh, palpate you can feel the prominency of the spine and by inserting our fist our, our fist or knuckle uh, you can assess the transverse outlet diameter of the maternal pelvis. In this uh, third image, you can see um, the, the two projecting portions is indicating the atrial tuberosity of the maternal pelvis. Uh, it, it will occupy around four knuckles of the fist of our hand and inside it will occupy three fingers uh, with the, uh, uh, along with this. You can you can also assess the cervix condition whether it is soft, hard, it is dilated, how much is it dilated, it is well effaced or not. Next, uh, coming to some of the points which we have to keep in mind that is, we should not do vaginal examination. If it is uh, with, uh, placenta previa, then uh, it should be excluded before. The vaginal bleeding before the placenta previa should be excluded. Uh, we have the principles in partograbal, so it is mentioned that in a four hour only one time we have to do vaginal examination. If it is needed, we can increase the number, but if it is not, then we should maximum we should avoid the previa examination as it is a source of infection to the mother. Next is sterile speculum examination. Here we have to uh, see the rupture of membrane if the woman is not in labor. If the labor starts, it's okay. Then if it is not in the labor, we have to see the rupture of membrane condition, whether it is intact or not. 
then admission to labor ward in active labor if the condition is in active labor regular painful contraction will come with the uh, with the three uh, nature of contraction that is the intensity frequency and duration and the cervical dilatation will be at uh, will be uh, three centimeter or four centimeter less time in labor ward less intrapartum oxytoxics and less analgesia it should be our aim that we should not uh, keep the mother in labor ward and less intrapartum oxytoxics should be given and analgesics should be given less next coming to the investigation um, investigation first of all in urine we have to see protein sugar and ketones like uh, for example if the uh, patient is having preeclamptic or eclamptic conditions then the uh, her level of protein will be level of protein urea will be up and uh, some negligible amount of protein is considered normal uh, as uh, as in labor there is breakdown of muscle there breakdown of tissues and it will generate proteins so negligible amount of protein is acceptable but if it is significant then we have to keep in mind then next is blood in blood we have to see the values of cbc rbs grouping whether it is ab ab or o cross matching for a high risk patient should be done coming to the second point preparation and care preparation for labor delivery and care during the labor process and this first point is bowel preparation bowel preparation is one of the important uh, point we have to keep in mind if the bowel is full then the descent of the fetal head will not be that easy as it should be there so there should be no bowel action for 24 hours or uh, then rectum if the rectum feels loaded on vaginal examination it will not give an accurate result so uh, so we have to empty the uh, bowel too next point is bladder care so both bowel and bladder should be emptied uh, here uh, we should encourage the mother to empty the bladder one and a half or two and a half hour before also and for this minimum time we have to keep bowel and bladder empty um, this uh, if the bladder is full then it will prevent the fetal hair from entering the brim entering the inlet or, or the pelvic brim and impeding the descent of the fetal head it, it it is actually in uh, inhibiting the effective uterine uh, contraction so that's why we have to keep the bowel and bladder both empty the quantity of the uh, urine should be measured and it should be recorded and a specimen obtained for testing next is nutrition no food should be permitted after labor is established then it is actually preventing the regurgitation and the aspiration which may uh, arise during the labor process which is again causing a complication to the mother then a small amount of uh, clear fluid or frozen pineapple ice chips uh, can be uh, given it is just to moisten the mouth of the mother then next is maintain we have to maintain adequate hydration uh, should be through the intravenous routes so uh, this is about the nutrition and in the fourth uh, perennial saving so i have also discussed uh, previously that nowadays perennial saving is not recommended as it is associated with uh, similar maternal febrile morbidity wound infection and neonatal infection compared with just elective clipping of the hair uh, next we are uh, coming to the routine early uh, artificial rupture of so it is not recommended as uh, as it is uh, discussed before also artificial rupture of membrane it is not an uh, routine procedure it is an elective procedure which should be done to the uh, to the condition wherever it is necessary next uh, moving on to the position of the mother uh, we should always ask a mother about uh, a walk about or in bed or she will whatever she wishes if she is able then she can walk around 
uh, but along it should, should be associated with uh, a tender or a, a culture or the staff as long as the patient is healthy presentation is normal presenting part engaged fetus is in good condition she can walk or she can ambulate herself uh, it also makes uh, makes uh, labor easy and descent will also take place sooner then uh, coming to the pain relief aspect of the labor then if the condition is if the pain is severe and analgesic uh, of opiate drugs example pethidine im injection or four hours and uh, inhale 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 national analgesia example we can say antonox and an epidural anesthesia analgesia we can give so this is about the preparation and care uh, we have to keep in mind during first stage of labor. Now moving on to the monitoring of the progress of labor. So mainly here we here one terminology comes that is pathograph. Uh, once the labor has become established, uh, all the events during labor should be recorded on pathograph. Pathograph is actually a single graphical sheet where we can uh, assess the normal labor progress of normal labor can be assessed whether it is deviated from the normal conditions or not deviated so here uh, in this pathograph uh, well-being of the fetus well-being of the mothers you can see means the components of the fetus and the mother along with the progression of the baby. so uh, in this pathograph you can see the uh, upper portion will be filled with the patient information like name uh, of the patient gravida para that is the obstetrical score of the mother hospital number date and time of admission and date of rupture of membranes so it can be seen in the upper portion of the of the pathograph well, so now the coming to the components of uh, pathograph in this image also you can see uh, next is the fetal information like fetal heart rate of the fetus, then uh, amniotic fluid condition and the uh, molding of the fetal head. So it will be marked uh, accordingly against the space which is provided in the pathograph. And in the third, uh, labor information like dilatation and the dilatation of the cervix and uh, accordingly the descent of the fetal head will be marked in this uh, column. Uh, here you can plot uh, the cervical dilatation as X and the descent of the fetal head as dot round circle. So here you can see the two lines that is alert line and the action line. Uh, if it is the normal, the, the graph of the labor will become on the on either left or on the alert line of the uh, on the alert line if it is coming on uh, closer to the action line or on the right side of the alert line it is indicating that the uh, normal uh, that labor is not occurring normal next uh, is contraction or you try and contraction condition we will plot this with the different color sets like uh, we we can indicate this with three different colors uh, indicating that light color is for mild contraction and little more little more darkened color as a moderate and uh, complete dark color sets block, block blocks with the uh, severe contraction with uh, given 10 minutes of time now it's coming to the medications uh, whatever medication we are giving to the patient should be noted down here uh, with the details like synthosinone drugs is given at what time and at what dose and at which route IV fluids whatever RL or NS uh, given it should be noted here and then at the lower portion of the pathograph maternal information should be noted down like pulse blood pressure temperature etc uh, with this urine condition like albumin ketones volumes uh, and the protein status will be noted down so it is a single sheet in this single sheet we can assess we can see all the details of the labor if it is uh, deviating from normal without wasting time without taking no time we can assess whether the labor is 
going normal or no whether the labor is in progress or we have to take action so we have to give some uh, some specific intervention to get the fetus delivered without complicating uh, both the mother and the fetus so this is about partograph uh, the basic components of partograph but but if we see uh, the monitoring or plotting of each component uh, here comes the condition of the fetus first so here uh, the fetal heart rate every half hour we have to plot we have to monitor and in the uh, membranes and the liker column we have to uh, uh, plot or we have to note the findings whatever the details we have found in uh, vaginal examination like we can uh, plot uh, we can write uh, i if the membrane is not ruptured if the membrane is ruptured then uh, ruptured and uh, it is the, the amount of the amniotic fluid is uh, so less or negligible amount then we can mark it as a that is absent next if it is ruptured and the amniotic fluid is clear it is not mixed with blood or any meconium uh, clear stroke color if we can see then we will note it as C that is means clear next is M M we can note it down when the meconium is when the when the amniotic fluid is coming out with meconium then if it is coming out with blood then uh, the, the the column will be marked as B next coming to the uh, next point uh, molding Uh, so molding is actually a process where this uh, fetal skull fetal bones accommodate uh, accommodate themselves uh, so that they are adjusted in the space available in the maternal pelvis so uh, here with the findings of the vaginal examination we can mark the molding column as zero if, if while examination with if the uh, fetal skulls can be separated then it can be marked as zero and uh, while examination if we can just uh, feel the feel that the fetal bones fetal hair, uh, skull bones are just touching each other then we can mark it as uh, plus sign one plus sign and the bones are overlapped it's just overlapped then uh, it can be marked as two plus sign and uh, this if it is bones are overlapped and it is severe we just cannot separate the overlap bones then we cannot um, then we can mark it as three plus signs so this is about the condition of the fetus that is fetal heart rate membranes and the liquor uh, which will be marked as i a c m and b then with the moldings we will mark as zero one plus sign two plus sign and three plus sign so next uh, monitoring the fetal heart rate we will auscultate uh, the fetal heart rate by using different methods like auscultation methods and electronic continuous uh, monitoring ctg that we can we uh, commonly use in labor room we can assess uh, with the fetoscope or the stethoscope and ctg it is being commonly used nowadays now the progression of labor we can see here progression of labor uh, first we have to see the cervical dilatation how much it is how much dilated how much centimeter it is dilated how much or how many fingers uh, the cervix is accommodating according to that we will come to know how much centimeter it is uh, dilating so the, this cervical dilatation we can plot with the x sign um, and descent we can plot with the zero uh, circle sound in active phase uh, we can see in partograph we we have seen that there are two line alert line and action line so in alert line it, it is drawn at the rate of one centimeter per hour cervical dilatation um, the mean rate of the slowest 10 percent of normal pg and action line drawn four hour to the right of the alert line intervention should be should be taken should be given if it is if the normal graph of the uh, labor is uh, coming at the right side of the alert line and flow or closer to the action line so next coming to the descent point every vaginal examination uh, uh, we, we we are finding uh, 
some of the condition of the fetal head where it 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 reaches uh, where in which station the fetal head reaches in every vaginal examination we will plot it as uh, zero or the small circle small dot amount of help head palpable above the pelvic rim and the position should be noted down and uh, here the third point is contraction uh, contraction of the uterus and this uh, every half hour we can assess the nature of the uterine contraction so here we can see we can assess the frequency per 10 minutes duration and intensity uh, uh, against the points we you have you can see three uh, three blocks which is indicating with different shades with uh, different light colors and lines and the complete uh, dark uh, blocks first color first uh, light set is indicating the mild contraction second is indicating the moderate and third one is indicating the severe one so uh, accordingly the accordingly the contraction nature we will mark the uh, mark the blocks of the photograph with this given sets so next uh, progress of the labor and this frequency of cervical examination um, most studies most research say that every 2 hours uh, if we do it is a risk of chorioamnionitis it is increasing with the increasing number of examinations so one of the principle of photograph says that in uh, four hours we can do one per vaginal examination so in some of the places uh, we should uh, we find that uh, previous examination is being done so it should be avoided so that we can prevent uh, uh, infection which may arise to the mother uh, now last point is condition of the mother the third component of photograph the first in first here medication here medication we can give as uh, oxytocin amount 30 per minute should be given and along with whatever the medication is given in this ring it should be marked in photograph and IV fluids which is being administered vital signs of the mother blood pressure four hours uh, per four hours it should be marked with arrow uh, which is arrow uh, above then pulse 30 uh, 13 per 30 minutes it should be marked with a dot and temperature two hourly should be assessed and in urine condition every time urine is passed we should mark we should uh, note it down the volume albumin and ketones so here the uh, complete photograph you can see uh, in this we have to plot all the details which we have discussed now so this uh, photograph has a lot of advantages actually this hell it is helping um, helping to reduce the maternal death rate by plotting uh, by monitoring a single sheet of paper without taking no time uh, it is uh, reducing the maternal death in india World Health, uh, World Health Organization photograph is uh, uh, it has been revised previously it is so uh, much complicated many lines are there so it has been simplified and it may it is World Health photograph to 2002 it makes us easy to plot it and to read it without taking much time so plotting should be done in active phase when the cervix is four centimeter dilatation in previous photograph it is plotted as it should be started it should be start when the cervix is 3 cm dilatation but uh, in the present and uh, simplified photograph it is being marked as 4 cm dilatation from where we should start plotting the photograph so next next comes the uh, se second stage of labor so this was about the uh, normal labor and how first stage of labor can be managed so the management of second stage of labor we will just, uh, discuss in my next uh, next next second part thank you